Okay, hello class. It's been a while since I've recorded a video, and also, as you can see, I no longer have a webcam set up on it, but nevertheless, it should be the same as any of my other videos. We're going to go over a couple of questions from the lesson, and then it's going to be up to you guys to finish the rest. So, what we have first, we are going to be working on Lesson 9. Just like I had talked about yesterday, we're going to be going backwards in time, a lesson to just sort of give you guys this better for asynchronous work, quote-unquote, lesson for you guys to do asynchronously so that we can focus on the better in-person lessons in person. So we're going backwards to lesson nine. And up first here, we have the classwork. It says example one is going to be all about interpreting number line models to compare numbers. Now, as you see, you see a number line in front of us. It's going to go from negative 20 all the way up to 20. And you can see two points on it labeled at negative 10 and five. What example one wants us to do is it wants us to look at these numbers and try to think of a situation that might use those numbers. So just like at the end of our lesson yesterday, where we wrote our own word problem. That's basically what example one here is asking us to do, as well as exercise one, which you will be doing on your own. So I know that we already have a little bit of experience doing this. I kind of just want to show it off to you guys one more time. So in this situation, I have negative 10 over here, and I have 5 over here. So I, what I can do is I can try to make a word problem out of this. So when I see these numbers, the first thing that comes to my head is, hmm, maybe people are driving along the street, and, well, this could be their position, how many blocks they are away from a place. So, what we can do here is I will say, let's go with Janet's mom and dad are driving in separate cars. Janet's mom is five blocks to the right. Of their house. Janet's dad is 10 blocks to the left of the house. The question itself could be something like who is closer to the house? And it's mom or her dad. And as you can see, you, we can use the number line where we would have our point zero here. We can have our point zero here representing Janet's house. And that's where Janet is. Janet is at home right now. Five blocks to the right of the house is going to be Janet's mom by this point. That's going to be mom. And then 10 points to the left is going to be her dad. We can easily see that Janet's mom would be closer to the house than Janet would be. Not Janet, Janet's dad. Let's erase the second D in dad. So for exercise one, exercise one, I don't have a slide for it, but it asks you to create a real world situation 
that relates the points that are shown on the numbered line model. It gives you a number line model, so all you have to do, look at that number line model, pull those two points off of it, and think to yourself, well, what could a word problem that uses these two numbers look like? What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a ban on using temperature because I can remember yesterday everybody was flocking after the idea of using temperature on their word problems for yesterday. So since we all can obviously use temperature, I want to see if we could get a little bit more creative and do something else. So first thing that you have to do is you need to go through and do exercise one. You can pause the video here to go and do exercise one now, or you can do it at the end of this video. I'll give about five seconds to those who want to pause it here. Okay, for those of you who um, either finished exercise one or are waiting until the end of the video, let's move on. I'm going to show off what exercise two is going to look like. Exercise two is going to be the lead off into all of the remaining exercises for this lesson. The start says that for each problem, you are going to determine if you agree or disagree with the representation. Then you're going to defend your stance by citing specific details in the writing of what this person put, put down. So we'll look at up first, we have Felicia. Felicia needed to write a story problem just like you guys just did that relates to the order in which the numbers negative six and a half and negative 10 are represented on a number line. She decides to write the following. During a recent football game, our team lost yards on two consecutive downs. We lost six and a half yards on the first down. And during the second down, our quarterback was sacked for an additional 10 yard loss. On the number line, I represented this situation by first locating negative six and a half. I located the point by moving six and a half units to the left of zero. Then I graphed the second point by moving 10 units to the left of zero. What we need to do is determine whether or not Felicia's story problem works with the numbers she was given. Now, she was given two negative numbers. So we know that both representations should have similar word choices because they're both about negative numbers. The good news about what Felicia has written down is that she starts by saying that they lost it on two consecutive downs we can see that they lost six and a half yards. Let me circle that slightly skinnier. We lost six and a half yards and another and yard loss. Now the word lost and loss do indicate that we are dealing with negative numbers. So that is a point on the agree side for me. So let's read the rest of this. So they said that they located the point negative six and a half by moving six and a half units to the left of zero. Now, when I think about a number line, I think, okay, my positive numbers are to the right of that number line, and my negative numbers are to the left of that number line. So if I'm looking for a number like negative six and a half, I am going to be moving to the left 
of 0. And we can show this off on our own personal number line if we want to. We'll put 0 further over here because we know that we're only dealing with negative numbers. And if I wanted to go find negative 6 and a half, going to the left would certainly get me there to negative 6 and a half. Again, this is just a sketch. Obviously, normally on a number line, I would put down each and every unit. But since we're just sketching this to prove a point, it's fine for now. They also decided to graph the second point, moving 10 units to the left of 0. Once again, that second point is negative 10. So moving to the left of 0, 10 units, would get us to negative 10, just like she wants us to get to. So, if I had to say whether I agree or disagree with Felicia's story problem, I would 100% agree with it. Because not only were they using the correct words to indicate that we were dealing with negative numbers like lost and loss, but they also told us the correct direction to move on the number line. So they told us for both of them, since they're both negative, we need to move to the left. Now, after this problem, there is questions three, four, five, six, seven, and eight that you guys are all going to work on today. They are going to be very similar to question number two, where you are given a scenario and you need to read carefully into what they are saying to find out if they're representing their numbers correctly, whether you agree with them or disagree with them. Make sure, however, you don't just say, oh, I agree, and walk off. You need to specifically say, well, why do you agree? Over here, what I did is I circled and bracketed off the parts of information that I feel made it so that I had to agree with her. I even drew a small number line here to show off that, yes, negative 6.5 and, and negative 10 are to the left of 0. I'm going to be expecting some similar things from you guys, just circling the words that they're using that make you agree with them, or circling the words that make you disagree with them, if any of them you disagree with. But with that, the rest of this lesson is up to you. Remember, that's going to be exercise one, which is going to be writing your own word problems, similar to like what we did at the end of class yesterday. And you are going to be working on exercises three through eight. That is also up to you. Now, with that, I'm going to sign off here. I will see all of you tomorrow for another synchronous class on an F day. Farewell.